Who is she? Why? I don't know. We start with a girl who is being let out of jail. There's something where they're like running up a hill. <laughs> Hi everyone, oh my god. I'm so scared to make this video. Uh, welcome. Hi, my name is Carrie. Thank you for being here. Today we're gonna embark, we're gonna, mm, I don't wanna say embark on a journey. We're gonna test myself. We're gonna expose myself and hopefully just have a little conversation about something that I found really interesting. Um, it's something that's kind of been going around the book community recently. I thought that the conversations that we had, um, I posted a reel and a TikTok of it, um, and the conversations that were had were really interesting and like things that I never even thought of came up and, and yeah, I just think the comment section of this video will be quite fun and eye-opening, hopefully, to people. But just before I dive in, before I forget, uh, I would like to give a shout out <laughs> God, this is horrible. I would like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. They're a service that allows you to host any kind of online presence. So I have a personal blog. I've used them for years, carriecakes.net. You can check it out. It's just really wonderful if you're looking to set up any kind of website. They have really great free templates that look incredibly professional and for people who aren't good at tech, so easy to set up. They have analytics, um, things like email subscription lists. They have comment sections and ways to connect your social media platforms and they also have monetization features if you are trying to open any kind of shop, etc. They're a really wonderful resource, so you can go right now to squarespace.com and set up your website for free. Check out the free templates I have mentioned, and then when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash carry can read to get 10% off of your first website or domain. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. All that information will be in the description box. Thank you as always to Squarespace for supporting this channel, and on to our video. So the topic that I want to discuss, as you might tell from the title, is memory and specifically remembering plots of books and does how much you remember affect whether or not it counts if you're reading. And so there's just so many elements of this discussion that I, I think we need to pick apart. So just to be clear, before anyone says that I like get the argument wrong, this has stemmed from social media and other people disbelieving or questioning how certain people can read as much as they claim. Specifically, I've seen it brought up of like people talking about how much they read, but they, and this is not, I'm just the messenger, um, but they are listening to audiobooks at three times speed. So they aren't, they can't really be reading if you aren't absorbing it and stuff like that. Um, so that's really where the argument stems from is people who say that they read like 70 books a month and people have problems with that. Whether or not people are lying, like I don't really see what people get out of it and I feel like people interacting with their content and saying you're a liar is just giving them more engagement, which is what they want if they're lying. Like that's the only thing you get out of lying about how many books you read is like people engaging with your content, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know what there is to gain by lying about that. So that's basically the context from which this argument stems from. But now it has just kind of morphed into this argument of like, if you don't really remember a book, it doesn't count. And in my reel where I was talking about it, I brought up a quote from Patti Smith in M Train and I remember, I don't remember what happens in M Train, let me be clear. I remember there's a scene where she's sitting on a bench, I think she went to Coney Island or something, and she sits in the same cafe a lot. That's my memory of M Train. But I remember her talking about how she doesn't remember the plots of many books. Like if she is super absorbed in it, she will close that book plot is gone. And I felt really seen by that because I'm kind of the same. I wouldn't say I like close the book and the plot is gone, but like main character name, <laughs> couldn't tell you. And she is a, a writer and an artist and someone who loves reading. So she's clearly not just like frivolously reading a book and forgetting about it or like reading it too fast and not analyzing it. It's like we we all interact with reading in different ways. And I think that's kind of the main point I'm interested in is like the definitions of all of these words. So like the definition of reading and, and what counts as reading, I think differs for everybody. So there were a lot of people in the comments saying like, well, if you don't remember the plot, like what's the point? 
And for me, it's so much about the emotional impact of a book or perhaps just the entertainment at the time, you know? Like maybe I read a book because I was on a really long train ride and I wanted to be entertained and it did the job. And like, that was a time in my life. If I don't remember exactly what the plot was, that's okay, you know? And also what was mentioned in the comments, which I didn't think of because I don't have ADHD, but a lot of people were saying that sometimes they just read books or like they're listening to audiobooks as a distraction to like keep their mind at its best operating level. You know, some people need distractions around. Yeah, that's still reading. Um, so I think that that's one thing that we aren't all agreeing on is that reading can be so different for so many people. And then another definition that I think we're all a little bit varied on, even the people who are like, that, that doesn't count as reading, is what is memory? How much do I need to remember? If I don't remember every character name, if I don't remember every plot point, every scene, is that enough? Like, what's the threshold for like what you remember? Because for example, M Train, I remember that she sits in a cafe a lot and I remember that she sat on that bench at the beach and that's about it. Is that enough or do I need to know more? And who sets that definition of how much you need to know? Like, do I need to write a book report about it? Do I need to summarize it vaguely, but like what's too vague? What's not enough for you? And then also how long do you need to remember the book for? Like there are books that I loved in my childhood, love them so much. And as we will most likely see in this video, I don't know if it's on this list. I haven't looked at the list. Um, I got you guys to on Instagram, give me books that you know I have read, go through my, you know, story graph or whatever and ask me what they are and I did see one person put one of my favorite childhood books and mm, lord help us um but for example I don't know if it's on the list but Inkheart fucking loved Inkheart what is that about I think a girl's mom went missing and I think oh there's a character I think the evil guy's name is Valentine and I only remember that because I did pick it up a couple years ago and I remember reading it being like oh that's weird his name's Valentine but maybe I'm wrong his name is Capricorn that's that's it I think I think the mom goes missing <laughs> so does it count? Does it count that I know that I love that book and like I would recommend it to anyone because it was just such a great fantasy story that I would love to reread again and it would be great because I don't remember the plot at all. Does that count? If I don't remember it now, you know? So I just think like for me, I don't care is my kind of point in this discussion is like I don't care how you read because reading is so private and literally only happens in your brain. And I think that's why we all turn to social media or book clubs, etc., to share our love of books because it is such a strangely kind of isolating thing. Only you are going to experience the book the way that you experienced it. Like every single person on this planet is going to read the same sentence, the same paragraph and experience it differently. Like we all see the books in our head, most of us, <laughs> see the books in our head like a movie. We're all picturing different things and that's wonderful and I, whatever you do to like gain entertainment or if you're in there for having your world expanded if you want new ideas if you want to learn new things like whatever it is that you want to get out of reading i hope that happens for you and i don't care how you get there like i don't you know that's my that's what i would hope most people would say and again if people are like lying about how much they read or they aren't reading enough for you just ask yourself why I don't know, it's just not like a big enough deal. So that's basically, <laughs> so that's my TED talk. That's what started this whole video idea is just like, how much do I actually remember? And I will say that I remember plots much better now that I am talking about books much more. Like pre 2020 and even like the first couple years I was on booktube, I had a really hard time remembering plots. I would have to take notes or I would have to look them up again and be like, what actually happened in this book? And then usually it would like jog my memory and the plot would start to come back to me. 
but cold turkey no I could not just like immediately tell you the plot of any book and I'm getting much better just through practice if I was just like a casual reader reading for myself and enjoying the book I would probably forget most of the plots and I think that's totally fine so that's my take on it and there were like a lot of really valid comments talking about dealing with ADHD or different kinds of things that affect your memory just consider that everyone absorbs things differently and loves things differently unless we decide on a very set definition of what remembering a plot is or what reading is for people i just don't think it's that big of a deal you know so anyway that was my very long intro to this video <sighs> which is testing myself on how much I remember these books. So I asked you guys on Instagram, like I said, to go in and pick books that you know I have read and I will see how much I remember. I'm going to keep, it's either, I don't know which side it's gonna be on, but whenever I talk about a book, I'm going to put the cover in the corner and when I am nearing spoiler territory, because I do want to see how much I remember, if I will be talking about spoilers, I will put a like red alert sign up here. And so you can like close your ears and cover the screen if you want to. And then I will take that little alarm bell off when it is in safe territory. So that's how I'm gonna do it. There will most likely be spoilers, but I didn't, it's hard to timestamp, you know? So that's how I'm going to be dealing with the spoilers, but I haven't looked at these at all. I literally opened the responses and then started to screen record and I just went like this. So I have them saved and we're gonna begin. Oh my God, I'm already scared. Oh my God, these are good. I'm just looking at the first one. Let's start. I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. Here we go. And we're starting off so strong. Katie, Katie. Sorcery of Thorns. <laughs> One of my favorite books. A book that I reread last year because a novella came out that was kind of like its sequel. Sorcery of Thorns is about, <laughs> I remember names, Elizabeth. Oh no. Elizabeth Silas. No. Nath Nathaniel? Is that, that's wrong. Oh no. Okay. So shaky on the names. Um, it's about a girl named Elizabeth who was raised in a library. It is a library full of spell books, grimoires, and the librarian's job is to basically keep the grimoires in perfect condition because if they get a little bit dusty, a little bit of book mold or whatever, they will turn into these evil crazy things, right? And that's all she wants to do in her life is to work at the library, be a guardian, live a quiet life amongst the books. However, there is a murder that takes place in the library and she is the top suspect. So she needs to go be taken in front of the court uh, of wizards and boy who comes to pick her up, is it Nathaniel? Okay, I'm just gonna call him Nathaniel. Um, the boy who comes to pick her up, the wizard, is Nathaniel, and as they are going to her court date, things arise, and um, we see that uh, there is a much bigger plot at play. So, spoilers is, there is an evil wizard who is trying to use all of the libraries to make like a pentagon somehow, and do something evil like <laughs> i don't remember quite what it is i'm assuming he wants to like be all powerful or something and she manages to save the day because she was raised by the library the spell books love her and she is somehow able to slay the grimoire demon and that's it that's all i got and nathaniel has like a whole background his like death magic thing silas is his little demon friend I think I did pretty good, <laughs> if I don't say it about myself. Ellie is coming in here <laughs> with the sunglasses emoji because he knows what he's doing. The Thief Lord, another one of my all-time favorite books. When I was a kid, it changed. It was one of those books that like, I was just so obsessed that I would read it over and over and over again. It is the header of my channel. If you go to my channel page, the header behind my profile picture is the cover of the thief lord it had such a huge effect on my life <laughs> okay um it takes place in venice was the younger brother's name Bo? i think it was i don't remember the older brother's name no he had a really good name <gasps> what was it it was like a noun it wasn't like temperance it was no that's pros prosper prospero anyway okay so we got one name down 
Um, and essentially, we follow this detective who is tasked with finding these two boys, these brothers, who ran away because their mom died and the aunt and uncle were only going to adopt the little brother. And the older brother was like, hell to the no, you're not taking my little brother away. So they run away to Venice because their mom always told them that Venice was a magical place. And they end up getting kind of adopted by this thief lord who's just this other kid and like his little group of kids who are pickpockets and all this stuff. So we follow the detective who's looking for them and then we also follow the boys and as they uncover the secret of the thief lord. And the spoiler is the thief lord is actually just like a rich Venetian kid and so the way that he pulls off all of his heists is that he just goes to parties with his parents at these rich people's houses cases the place and then either comes back and steals stuff or just steals stuff at the party that's all I remember Ooh, and there's a boy who's obsessed with boats and radios and then there's a the girl is named Hornet because she has a a braid that looks like a stinger I just remember loving every little bit of that book. I love it so much. Um, that's the Thief Lord. So, mm, got it. Oh my god. Okay, Strange Reads came at me with two back-to-back -back that I don't remember <laughs> at all. The first one is The Memory Police. I believe it takes place in the future. It's, it's dystopian and I forget either people are slowly forgetting things or like it's illegal to remember or something and our main character is like protecting a family <laughs> i don't remember and the ending sh they lose their memory right like the ending is just her descent in his or her descent into not remembering anything and being like life is fine no nah, no memories i think I don't know. <laughs> and then kind of within the same vein as the Decagon House Murders. You picked good ones. Oh my god. I don't remember. Ooh, it is about a house mm -hmm. where a few people go because I think it's haunted. Like I think that they're trying to, it's basically like a Japanese take on and then there were none. And so there's a group of people who go to this house and I don't remember why, but they all die one by one. And I think they're on an island, and I don't remember who done it. I don't remember anything. That's it. <laughs> the Decagon House murders. Ooh, Bunt Cake 14. You're hitting it. You went far back in my Goodreads. Holy shit. Okay. Um, Mr. Popper's Penguins. A man is a plumber, and he somehow comes across a bunch of penguins, and he makes a penguin friendly environment in his home using his refrigerator, I think. And I think he just goes around showing people the penguins. I think. <laughs> the next one, okay, The Doom Spell. This is a trilogy. And this is what I mean by remembering things. Like, I have such a strong sense of nostalgia when I see those books, when I think of those books. I remember buying them. Like, that's a memory I have of these books. I was in the UK and I bought the first book at a bookstore and I was like in third grade, I think. And I read the first one and we had to go back to get the other ones or maybe it was even like the next time I went to England. I picked up the continuation of the series. So I just distinctly remember loving them. I remember that the author wrote these books for his kids, which I thought was so great. And I remember it feeling very similar to The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It had a very similar feeling to that. And I just remember it taking place in winter and there was an evil queen and that's all I got for the doom spell, but I, oh God, I should reread those books. And then another one from my childhood that I, this was a book that like, I would just pick it up all the time. I don't know why, like I didn't love it, but it was just a book that whenever I, I needed to, I needed a book, I would just open to any random page and read it. I remember it being very short and this was about, it was kind of like, a Snow White thing where the girl was becoming more beautiful than her either evil stepmother or evil mother. I think she was sent away or like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. But the cover comes to mind immediately. That's beauty. Again, another one I should read. I should actually just reread all these books that I don't remember at all. Stop. And then he ate my boy in trancers. Oh my goodness. The Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging series, read them all ate them up, thought they were the funniest thing the world has ever seen, 
okay? Love those books. The Boy in Trancers are her fake eyelashes, I'm pretty sure. The series just follows this girl named Georgia, and I feel like I remember this a little bit more because I, I watch the movie like once a year. <laughs> um, but we follow a girl named Georgia, and these books are basically her diaries as she is a crazy teenage girl. I don't remember anything other than she does get with her sex god lead singer of the boy band, character but then I think that doesn't work out and she has this weird relationship with what's his name the laugh something the laugh was his name and that's all I know she had a crazy cat she had a crazy little sister <laughs> but I love them I had so much fun and it changed my vocabulary although I'm like oh I'm having a nervy bee yeah just fantastic fantastic Carol Z we hunt the flame I made a full video about how much I love this duology <sighs> It is about a world where there is this, <laughs> there's this magical forest surrounding this town and we need to stop it from spreading or else it's gonna swallow the town. And our main girl has this like prophecy told to her that she can, she's the one who's gonna fix it. So she goes off on a mission. But then on our other POV, we have this king who's sending his son to go also find something and kill anyone that gets in the way. And this girl gets in the way, but of course he doesn't kill her. <laughs> that's it. Sorry, I'm tapping out. That's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah, that's all I got. I'm so sorry. Ooh, okay. A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I was actually just thinking about this. And I don't remember why. This was a trilogy that should have been a duology. I remember that. It's a... It's like a it's like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's about a girl from Washington DC who witnesses a kidnapping and she saves the girl being kidnapped, but instead she gets kidnapped and she gets brought to another realm where there is a king, prince, whatever, who Beauty and the Beast style needs someone to fall in love with him and everything will be good again, I guess. And it's him and his like bodyguard. I know there's something else. I know that she rides a horse and goes and sees the villagers <laughs> at one point. And then as the story continues, bodyguard gets a romance. Her brother is like in trouble with a gang or like the cops or something. Spoilers, I believe that she realizes that there's nothing for her in Washington DC. She also has cerebral palsy, I'm pretty sure. Um, and there's nothing for her in Washington DC, so she decides to stay because they did fall in love. But the second book kind of turns him into a tamlin -y kind of figure where he is traumatized by almost losing his love or something. And so he's kind of like overprotective and not nice, honestly, because we get another POV that makes him very not nice. And I don't remember how anything ends. Oh, I do. I do. The bodyguard, I think, is the is a prince of something else, like another group of people. And so he goes off to meet them and there's a war. More is coming back to me. I actually think that he is the rightful leader, but then I think he thinks that the main guy, the Tamlin-y guy, makes a better king. And he doesn't know how to tell him that, hey, we're half brothers, I think. Let me know. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All of you sick people putting Six of Crows. Okay, Six of Crows was the reason that I started this channel. I was so shaken and so in love. Um, I needed to talk about books with someone. So Six of Crows is the reason why I'm here today talking to you. I remember I remember Six of Crows because I've, I've done rereads. I've also watched the TV show. I will say though that I didn't remember like when people complained about certain things in the TV show like, oh, the chronology is off or like, oh, they mentioned this when like actually this was supposed to happen much later. I met, I noticed some of them, but not all of them. Um, so I don't remember details. There's one specific scene in Crooked Kingdom where Inej is up on like the top of something, like a granary or something, and she's sword fighting another girl or like, you know, Inej knife fighting another girl. Who is she? Why? I don't know. But that's a scene that like really stuck with me visually. Six of Crows, we follow Kaz Brecker who needs to come up with a crew in order to do this one huge heist that is going to be his last big thing. Like he could retire or something afterwards, not that he would want to, um, but he 
is hell-bent on <laughs> another Lee Bardugo. He's hell-bent on knocking down his rival. We find out why they are rivals more than just being the heads of opposing gangs later in the book. And with that money, he could totally just like torch this man. He gets a crew of Inej, Jesper, hmm. Matthias, well, all right, let's put him down. Nina, <laughs> um, oh my God. Oh my God, look at this, look at me. Not remembering Jesper and, Jesper and literally one of my favorite characters. He's a redhead in the book. It's, I'm just blanking on it right now. But if you, I'm so sorry to this man. Wylan, Jesus. I, I had an N in there for Nina and I thought I was like, Nathan, Nathan, no. Wylan, I'm so sorry. See, biggest fan. They head to the prison to steal this thing. While they're there, in order to get Nina to join, they had to promise to help jailbreak this guy named Matthias. I don't know if he's gonna be important. Out of the prison. So he is the sixth crow. And they have a little heist. What are they trying to steal? I don't know. I don't know. What are they trying to steal? <laughs> In the moment, I didn't remember. But don't worry, I remember the drugs. It's all about this amplifying magic, very addictive. I, okay, guys, I'm not, I'm not that dumb. I do remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> and our little Wylan lookalike, whose name, off the top of my head, I will never remember. They think they're trying to steal a person. They're trying to steal the person who knows how to make this drug. <laughs> but they do it. And spoilers, the end of Six of Crows, just the first book, Inej gets kidnapped. It's all a trap, somehow. I forget exactly how, but they, it's a trap. They kidnap Inej. That's how the book ends. I lost my freaking mind, immediately went and got the second book. Actually, my mom bought it for me because I was like freaking out. It was one of the first books, ebooks I ever purchased in my life. <laughs> Cricket Kingdom. Crooked Kingdom, uh, we just try to take down the head of the gang. I do, so I remember like the big points, I, I think, but who was that girl <laughs> fighting Inej? I have no clue. Oh my gosh, okay, this one's a good one um, because I, I'm actually going to be restarting this series because I haven't read the second or third book, but this, the trilogy has now ended, um, and that is Defy the Night. I remember this because it was such a like unfortunate timing for this book. Defy the Night is about a fantasy world where there is some kind of fever or flu or something going on that's like killing a bunch of people. She wrote this book in 2019 before she knew that the world was going to go through something like that. And so we follow our two characters who are trying to steal medicine from the wealthy or the royalty and distribute it to the poor who can't access it. Spoilers, the guy who's helping her steal is the prince, okay? Um, and then she has to come, she has to go to the castle and live there for some reason. And I don't remember why. And I don't even remember how it ends. Like I think that there's, there's some conspiracy where I think that somebody from another country is like manufacturing the illness because they control the ingredients needed to make the cure or the vaccine or whatever, something like that. But anyway, it was just very, I, the reason I remember it is because I just thought it was so unfortunate that she came up with this idea and wrote a relatively good young adult fantasy and it came out in 2020 or 2021 perhaps. Um, so when I was reading it, it was still like, especially here in Korea, like we were still totally masking. Like it was very, you know, I was just starting to become the homebody that I am now because I have to go outside every single day or else I feel really antsy. Um, and so I was still in that like transition of learning how to be inside all the time thing. So it really affected me and I think that's why I remember it more. But in terms of the actual details, sorry, I will know soon because I'm going to be rereading it. <laughs> the prison healer. There is a girl who works in the prison or she is in prison, she is in jail, but she's a good healer. So they let her work in the hospital wing and there is a woman that gets delivered she's a she's going to be a prisoner but she's like really hurt so she needs to be healed first either she wakes up or she has a note somehow a message is passed to our girl saying like 
you need to guard this person and that's it and she takes it as a sign of her family coming to rescue her because that's what she's been holding out for is her family coming to rescue her but then there's this new guy who shows up in the prison oh what happens she has to like do something like the royal family shows up in order to she's like being made an example of so they like put her through all of these tests like trying to kill her and each time she gets saved. So like she never used her powers, that's what it was. I didn't like the book because she was just like there around and everyone else like saved her. And then there's a huge twist at the end and it just kind of, I didn't really enjoy it. I don't even really remember the twist. Like she, I know that she has magic, but like her mom was like the head of the, the people fighting the royals or something, is that right? Hmm. Hmm, I don't remember. <laughs> a violet made of thorns? Good lord, I don't remember. Um, it's about a girl who has some power. Oh, it's the prophecy? She can make prophecies, and so she has been like hired, adopted, raised by the palace because they hope that she makes good prophecies but she's got nothing like her her powers are very weak so she kind of makes up fake prophecies and i think that gets her in trouble a little bit but there's like this one prophecy about the prince that people are really worried about or like it's controversial i don't know the prince and her allegedly hate each other and then they they actually love each other and i i didn't like it i remember liking one of the side characters like the prince's guard or friend i liked him and i just remember he was a young boy the prince was a young boy and he was in a carriage and he either he like saw her on the road or something why do i and then picked her up like i don't remember i don't remember actually just <laughs> oh my god the wind up bird chronicle <laughs> what plot so it's about, I've probably read the first two chapters a million times. I've probably only finished the book once in my life. It is about a man who is just like a ball of nothing. He's good for nothing. Typical Haruki Murakami character, all right? He doesn't have a job. He's kind of looking for a job, but not really. He's kind of, he's doing okay as like a house husband while his wife goes to work every day. And while she's at work, his one... Thing that he needs to do is find their fucking cat because their cat ran away and there's like this weird alley behind their house that they think he ran off to so the man has to go search for the cat every day and there's like a well and that's it oh and then there's a house something about the house next to the well all right <laughs> that's that so many six of crows you crazy you're crazy guys someone did say ink heart adrian illustration all right yeah ink heart as i said i think the mom has been missing for a very long time and they go into another world <laughs> people are asking for crave and zodiac academy no, I do remember those, but I think only because I do watch my videos back sometimes, and so I remember it through that. If you wanna know those plots, watch my videos. <laughs> oh, okay, Enchantment of Ravens is about a girl who is mortal, lives near the Fae border. Fairies cannot make anything, so they can't cook for themselves. They can't make music. They can enjoy everything, but they can't make it. And so she is a artist, specifically a portrait artist, and Faye love her because she makes beautiful things. And one day she gets a commission from this guy, this fairy. It's like very weird vibes. Um, he comes in, I think he has to come a couple times to sit for the portrait. She paints it, again, weird vibes. He leaves with the portrait comes back pissed because the portrait showed emotion that like he wasn't expecting like the fairies were laughing at him because his portrait like he looked sad or whatever it was um and so he demands that she like come to his court and explain and like apologize and blah 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 so then it becomes a journey of this guy taking her to his court to explain herself and spoiler is he is the autumn king He's the king of the autumn court or the prince of the autumn court or something like that. And what happens after that, I don't know. I remember that there's a a banquet and she sees the fae as what they really are, which is like creepy people made of sticks. But in terms of anything else, why are there ravens? Does he turn into a bird? I don't know. 
I don't I don't remember anything actually. <laughs> Ooh, Sky in the Deep. Sky in the Deep <sighs> was inspired by Vikings. <laughs> it's about two different groups of people, tribes, if you will. One worships the sea god, one worships the fire slash mountain god, and they're always fighting. Ooh, oh, whew, it's coming back. There's a war, the battle scene at the very beginning. This is only gonna spoil like the first chapter. There's a battle scene, they're fighting each other, and our main girl is fighting her enemies and realizes her brother that went missing, who she thought the enemy killed, is on the enemy's side fighting for the enemy. And so he takes her, kidnaps her, takes her back to their village or whatever and she has to stay there until like a they trust her and b i think wait for the snow to melt or something and slowly but surely she falls in love with someone who is her enemy and they have to bring peace between the tribes there's something about a river <laughs> sky in the deep please read it it was fine a deadly education um i thought that this was ugh. This was a book that I loved the concept and then I didn't like the second book so I never actually finished the series but the first book is taking place in a magical world where magic attracts demons or like demon-like things, evil things and so when magic people enter basically puberty like once they become teens and their magic starts to develop they give off a very strong magical aroma and they don't have the skills to protect themselves yet so the magical world has created this little like rift it's like a half dimension and it's a school where they live completely protected from these demons and they study and study and study until finally their last year they get let out and they have to like fight their way out like most of the kids don't survive the final fight and if they did survive it means they're strong enough to live in the world with their magic having to every once in a while fight off demons and so the whole book is like they just self-study and then vaguely have to either fight each other off or fight off these little demons that get through the cracks. And our main girl is obsessed with trying to figure out what's gonna happen to her after you graduate because there's all of these different, like, I don't remember what they were called. Every city has its kind of club. Oh, I forget the word. If you join one of them, they can kind of like help lend you magic and you lend them magic. And it's just like a, it's a good thing to be in one of these groups. And so, she is an outcast but she's trying to find a way into one of these groups but then i don't remember anything else i don't remember what oh some boy saves her life i think he like won't leave her alone after that and he's kind of like this good at everything kind of golden retriever goofball and i just remember that their food was always poisoned like it was a very difficult time getting food at the cafeteria and then there's some conspiracy about it because like why would you let everyone go at the same time that's like a huge burst of magic so of course all the demons are gonna like congregate and wait there to catch the students like if we had a different way of doing this maybe less people would die that's all i got deadly education <laughs> um a lot of people asking about light lark i don't remember i remember the main girl is supposed to be from like the She's a wildling. She's supposed to be from the wilds. And she's a seductress that her main way of seducing people is she just dresses in basically nothing all the time. And all of the like royalty gets sent to this island to fight each other, to like break a curse. But I think it's more like if they just work together, they could solve the curse. And there's the sun guy and the darkness guy and i think there's a love triangle there and that's it that's all <laughs> and spoiler she's betrayed by her best friend but like miles away saw that coming from the second that character was introduced i knew i was like oh she's bad that's all i got <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one the sunbearer trials um they just announced the sequel i think it's a duology i don't know if it's a, tr a trilogy or like a series but they just announced when the second one is coming out so i it's on the brain recently sunbearer trials is about a world where there are gods and the demigods like the children of these gods 
have to go to these trials to become a sun bearer. No, it's more than that. Like they travel throughout the realms and they have a different battle each place that they go. And I think that it, I don't remember why. I just remember that our main character is like not expected to survive, not expected to even compete. I remember they're like on a boat going to another realm. I just remember really liking it. I remember liking that all the characters acted like teenagers. They really felt like they acted their age. A lot of great discussion. Our character is trans and just a lot of great discussion about that and character description wise it was very interesting. I remember there's something, there's something where they're like running up a hill. <laughs> That's all I got but I remember really enjoying it and wanting to continue so there's a talking parrot. He has wings. No, Oh, 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 our main character has wings, but they're kind of like not fully formed or something. And it's all about, you know, I think it's about like self-acceptance, but also talking about body dysmorphia and gender dysmorphia. And the wings are kind of a symbolism of that. Um, that is my final detail. I'm so sorry. Okay, this one, same vein as Six of Crows. <sighs> It was a trilogy that I loved and I felt like I wanted to do a reread actually recently um, and that is Gilded Wolves. This is one of my favorite <laughs> series. We follow a group of friends who are tasked with- oh, oh, okay, okay. Here we go. Our main character is used to be a part of one of the ruling families or like the kind of high-ranked families that control the magic within this world. He lost his spot as a member of his house and so his whole goal in life is to be reinstated as the head of his house, have a seat at the table kind of thing. And so I believe they go on a kind of like heisty thing to <laughs> reinstate him. They have to find like certain magical objects there's a lot of scenes that take place in the catacombs. There's a lot of scenes that take place in the Paris World Exhibition or whatever that took place in the 1800s. It's kind of like Belle Epoque kind of Paris, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, yes, and, and there's kind of like a tragic betrayal and a tragic end to the first book. And then the second book, they are now in St. Petersburg. They are again doing something weird where they have to go to this house and again find something, like find a clue. <laughs> and once again, there's a betrayal or like a, you know, a twist. The third one takes place in Venice. And I don't remember anything about that book whatsoever, except for the ending because I didn't like it. But yeah, I just remember loving each of the characters. One character is from the Philippines and talks a lot about colonialism and the effects of even though he's fluent in Spanish, um, even though he's like an incredibly brilliant mind, he's never given a proper seat at the table. Um, there's another girl who I believe is on the autism spectrum. I believe her background, she's also Jewish. And so we talk about all of those things with her. Um, there's a love interest who has a power. Ooh, I think she's like, she's like a burlesque dancer, I think. And I don't remember her power, but she has one. And my battery's about to die. But that's, I've reached the end. I've reached the end. <laughs> oh my gosh, the vanishing half. Two sisters, twins perhaps. One of which is so white passing that she lives, this takes place in like the 60s, I think. Maybe earlier, I'm not sure. <laughs> but she lives a life letting people think that she is a white woman because of that has a very different life from her sister who is a black woman. And they're living in LA, but their paths never cross. Do they even know that they're sisters? <laughs> and then something happens where their paths converge. And <laughs> voila, <laughs> the vanishing half. Harun in the Sea of Stories, yes, that is one of my favorites. Someone said, you've read it, right? Yes, again, one of my favorite books that I read over and over and over again. This is about a boy whose mother ran away and whose father is like a traveling storyteller and his father gets hired by various politicians to like tell stories at their events and then, you know, basically use him for entertainment to get people to come to their rallies and stuff like that. They go somewhere for some political thing and then his father loses the ability to tell stories 
Like he opens his mouth and the magic is gone. And then Haroon has to make that magic come back somehow. He has to find the tap. There's, I think there's like a legitimate tap that magic comes out of. A lot of it takes place on a boat on a houseboat. There's a bus ride, very treacherous bus ride through the mountains. That's all I got. And that's much more than I remember about Luca and the Fire of Life because there is a sequel and nothing about that book, but I remember loving it. So, <sighs> Serpent and the Wings of Night. I read this so recently, oh God. It's about a girl, a human, who was raised by her father, who was like the king of the vampires. And she has been training her whole life because she wants to prove herself in this kind of Hunger Games-esque competition against other vampires. So like she is not on equal footing with the competitors, but she wants to prove herself and win and like become, that's who becomes the heir to the throne, I guess. During that competition, she meets someone and they become they like begrudgingly become allies and then we enter spoiler territory and it turns out i forget what his deal is he was a human and then he got turned but they fall in love whatever and i think the mystery they're trying to solve is like what happened to her and like her mother or something <laughs> the humans like what happened to those humans because she believes that she was oh it's all coming back she believes that her father the king of the vampires saved her but i think it turns out that he actually just like came in and killed her family for shits and giggles or something like that and took her and then at the end of the battle it's them in at the end of the like hunger games thing it's like a pita katniss situation where it's the two lovers she kills him but uses her one wish or something to bring him back to life and then he kills her dad Yep. <laughs> to kill a kingdom, there is a mermaid siren lady. Um, and her, in order to become queen, her mom needs her to gather like X number of hearts, royal hearts, before this time period. And so she goes off to kill a bunch of royalty. And this one prince is like, I see what's unfolding and I don't like this. We're gonna kill this siren. And they end up working together for some reason. And I remember there's a big battle with her mom. Love books. Again, that was a book I thoroughly enjoyed. <laughs> Oh my god, we're only halfway through. I think that a lot of these are repeats now. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh god, Wayward. Wayward by Amelia Hart. You're the reason I read it and I absolutely loved it. Carly? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> there are three points of views or three timelines and we follow basically this family of like the grandma, the mom, and the daughter. And it's about, they are witches. That's all I remember. I'm so sorry. I also remember enjoying it. That's all you're getting. <laughs> Conversations with friends. Oh geez, I remember not enjoying it. It's about two friends, or are they a couple? Were they roommates? Um, who meet this woman who is an author that they really admire and they start just like hanging out with her all the time she's an older woman one of them starts a relationship with the husband one of them maybe starts a relationship with the wife and i just remember it not being good like i just didn't like it i don't remember why that's it miss sally rooney that's all i got <laughs> graceling oh another one i enjoyed um this is about a world where babies are born and then they will if they are blessed uh they will show signs of having a grace which is a magical power and it could be something like i can make water boil or i can kill anyone with a single touch and so if you have a baby with a grace you have to show them to the royal family and they will decide whether or not they want to like keep you as something useful to them. Our main girl, I think has the death touch. She has some power that is very valuable to the king as like a kind of military power. One day, <laughs> one day, hmm there's somebody breaks into the palace they go on some journey together suddenly there's a boy they go on a journey together and they fall in love 
Um, there's a random girl that gets picked up along the way. <laughs> I believe her name is Bitter Blue. At one point, spoilers, at one point, the main guy goes blind and I think he slowly gets his sight back or maybe he doesn't ever get his sight back I don't remember that's it <laughs> I'm so I have no I don't remember I just remember they like live in a castle and they were like there's like somebody running around at night maybe she's trying to break in somewhere I don't remember I'm so <laughs> Ooh, I love Project Hail Mary Project Hail Mary was so good this was about a man who wakes up and he has no memory of where he is what he's doing, why he's there. And slowly, as his memories come back and he kind of explores his surroundings, we realize that he is in a spaceship. He is a researcher um, who was sent on a mission to save the world. In English, we say like a Hail Mary pass, which is basically like last ditch effort right? This is their last shot at saving the world because the sun is like exploding or something. There's a plan put in place. But in order to get to where they're going, they needed to be put into a coma and his fellow researchers did not wake up. So he is alone in this spaceship where they don't think he's gonna make it back in time. And if he fails his mission, which he's not really sure what it is, everyone on earth will die. He ends up meeting up with I forget how this occurs, but he ends up meeting up with a alien who is also trying to save the world, but he can't speak. He has something, he either can't speak. He's like a rock, I'm pretty sure. Is he a rock? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi. Uh, yeah. At home? Oh, this is talk to your husband afternoon time. Oh, I love talk to your husband afternoon time. I'm fine, I'm filming a video. No, I can pause the video. Do you wanna say hi? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, we're back. Oh my gosh, the likeness, Tana French. I remember this one because I've mentioned it multiple times in a video, in videos, because I liked it so much. Her other ones, all the other books by Tana French, I don't remember whatsoever. This is a thriller. This is about a girl who is missing and or killed. No, she's definitely dead because they have her body and so they know that the detective on the case, the young woman detective, is like her exact doppelganger. Like identical, creepy, not related, but just perfectly identical. And so in order to interview the people at the house and like find out because she was living with this girl was living with a bunch of her college friends before she died in order to like interview them and understand the crime our detective goes and lives with them because they think she's just missing they don't know that she's dead once she gets found out because of course she does i think that like her life is a little bit in danger i don't remember who did it <laughs> but i remember what sets her off she eats onions or something like she eats something that the other that the other girl doesn't i don't know i feel like the legality of all of that is in question like <laughs> weird little book but i enjoyed it but yeah i don't remember who done it and i love that because i could read it again <laughs> dance of thieves a duology i loved don't remember a damn thing i think a girl is sent to steal something the prince stops her oh <laughs> that's all Ooh, of such a fun age i remember this because it took me by surprise i thought like based on the title for some reason i thought it was going to take place in like the 20s or something um the 1920s but it doesn't it's present day our main girl is mm, doing night classes or something she has like a plan but currently she is a like part-time kind of babysitter nanny for this family who has a little girl. I don't know what the wife does. I think the wife is like a social media influencer. The husband is a news anchor. And I think he says something on air that is racist and the police and the journalists storm their house. And so kind of middle of the night, the mom calls our main girl to be like, listen, I just think my daughter's gonna be really scared. She's like four, um, can you come pick her up? and just like take her out of the house for a little bit so we can get this settled. Or like her dad was getting arrested, I don't even remember. But basically, can you just like take her out for a bit? 
So our main girl was just either going or going to or coming back from a party. So she was kind of in a party outfit instead of like typical nanny outfit. So when she picks up the girl and takes her to just like the grocery store, cause her that little girl really likes going to the grocery store and they're walking around, all of a sudden this woman sees like a black woman in clubbing attire walking around late at night with this little white baby and of course the woman is like ah she's a kidnapper or something the police are called it's a whole thing people are filming blah, blah, blah. she gets rescued by the dad I guess and so then I believe the mom keeps our main girl around and close in order to basically be able to say like but we have a black friend so we can't be racist I don't remember anything more than that but I just remember she was being used in that sense but I remember liking it I just remember going into it thinking like this is not the 1920s I thought it was gonna be about like flappers no <laughs> I love how there are so many people who are like I don't remember if you've read this <laughs> like all of our memories are just shit <laughs> anyway um nine perfect strangers this is a thriller this is by the author of big little lies it takes place in australia it's like a retreat some kind of like meditation health retreat or whatever and i think someone dies i think it's again another like um and then there were none situation maybe or maybe just one person dies i don't remember Again, me with the thrillers, man. I can I can reread a thriller like a week after I've read the book. <laughs> and finally, Throne of Glass. So I have told people that I have read these books. I've given them a try and I did not enjoy them at all. So I think I read four potentially. Um, I read at least half of the series. I know that people are like, ah, oh, you only read the first one it gets better i gave it a try not for me so what i remember of throne of glass we start with a girl who is being let out of jail which i think was like a hard labor camp or did she escape anyway she's out whether she was let out or she got out she ends up working for the royal family as an assassin and I think she first falls in love with the bodyguard and then she kind of falls in love with the prince. <sighs> I remember there's some scene where there's like a, uh, now I can't even remember words, like a carriage and I think there's like a bomb in it. That's all I remember. Yeah. And I think we learn that she isn't who, she isn't as like normal, like, oh, just another assassin she has a deeper, a more important history to her. I continued on and once the witches were introduced, I was like, what the fuck? Like, where are we? What's going on? That I stopped. Um, but yeah, that's my grand summary for Throne of Glass. Everyone asking for my plot summary, there it is. There was a carriage that may or may not have had a bomb in it. <laughs> so there you go. Let me know what you think of my memory and if it counts do those books count i think i actually did better than i thought i would but let me know which books you think it i can't count as having read or just what your thoughts are on the argument in general um how do you remember books do you remember the feeling do you remember certain scenes do you count that as breeding even if you can't tell me the plot would love to know your thoughts respectfully i think that was my first real big experience of tiktok like book talk people are a lot less nice than booktube and bookstagram people so um that was yeah i didn't like that comment section um so just be open-minded and kind and please know that everyone sees things differently all right we're not a monolith or else we'd all be writing the same damn books which would be no fun for anyone so yeah i will catch you guys later um this was so fun thank you so much to everybody who sent their suggestions in i didn't get to everybody but i appreciated all the contributions once again thank you to squarespace for sponsoring this video link will be in the description box but you can go to squarespace.com slash carrie can read to get 10% off your first website or domain highly recommend and 
now I've got to go. My voice is gone and I'm going to edit this up for you and I will see you guys later. I think my next video is Japan related because by the time you're watching this, I will have been to Tokyo uh, for Lunar New Year. We get a big break here uh, in Korea. So we're jetting off. Going to show Kurt Tokyo for the first time, uh, a city I know and love. So that will be fun. And yeah, so I will catch you guys later. Okay. Thank you always. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>